What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Dynamic Components tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna start a series on creating dynamic components inside of SketchUp. We're gonna talk through kind of how they work, how the different parts and pieces uh, come together, other things like that. Um, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. So within the course, I've got start to finish SketchUp training where I teach you how to use the program step-by-step, -step, a community forum where you can ask questions, and also live member calls where you can come and get your questions answered live on a call with me. So if that's something you're interested in, you're ready to take your SketchUp learning to the next level, make sure to check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So a dynamic component is basically a component inside a SketchUp that has data associated with it in some way. And so what you can do with dynamic components is this is a cabinet that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. Not all components are like this, by the way. But if I right click on this and go down to dynamic components and click on the option for component options, what these components do is this allows me to basically come in here and select different things about this and click on the apply button and notice how this is going to adjust dynamically. So what this does is this gives us the ability to change things like lengths and colors and other things like that. It allows us to create kind of smart components inside of SketchUp. And so this is a more advanced example and we'll come back to something like this in the future. But for now, let's kind of start with the basics of working with dynamic components. All right, so we're gonna start by doing something really simple. We're just gonna draw a rectangle right here. And then we're just gonna take that rectangle we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna make it a component. And we'll just call this dynamic rectangle for right now. And then we're gonna click on the create button. So what that's done is that's taken the edges and the face in here and that's made that a component. Well now what we can do is we can right click on this and go into dynamic components and notice how there's options in here for component options which is what we clicked on before. Notice how there are currently no options associated with this. There's also an option in here for component attributes. And so what component attributes is gonna do is that's going to allow us to basically adjust things about this object. And so there's a lot of different options over here. There's a getting started guide. Um, there's functions, which we're not going to worry about too much in this video, but they let you do math with different things. But then there's also the information associated with this object. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to adjust this object. Well, what we can do is we can click on the button right here, the little plus button. So that's going to give us a list of the different things that SketchUp has that are information about this object. So you can see how there's things like the name and the item code, which are like object information, the position, which affects where this is in a 3D space, the size, which tells us the length along the X, Y, and Z, as well as the rotation, and then some other things, like for example, materials and um, on click is gonna allow you to do something when it's clicked on, other things like that. So you can see how there's a lot of different options for things we can do, including including creating custom names, which we'll talk about a little later. But for now, let's do something really simple. Let's just come in here and let's just add an object for length X and add an object for length Y, like this. And so notice what that does is that gives us a little window on the right-hand side with information about this object. And so notice how if I click in here, I can actually affect the size of our object just by clicking in here and typing. So if I was to type in a value of 20 right here and then hit the enter key, notice how this object is going to change so that it's 20 inches long. If I was to click in here and add a value of something like 40 and hit the enter key, notice how this would go to 40 long. And so in its simplest form, this is going to allow us to affect the way that our object works. And so if we were to come in here and click on the plus button and try to add a length Z though, which is the size along the Z axis, notice how we can't do that. So if I type in a value of 10, notice how this stays at zero. That's because this object doesn't have a Z attribute because it's flat. So it has no length along the Z axis. So let's say that we were to come in here and let's create a new component. So in this case, we're gonna create a box. So we're just gonna come in here, just draw a box, and then we're gonna push pull it up like this. And then we'll select the whole thing, right click and click on make component. And we'll call this dynamic box and hit the enter key. Well, then we can come in here under dynamic components, component attributes, and we could add attributes for the X, Y, and Z. 
or I can just click in here and click on the add all. That's gonna add all three of these. Well now, notice with this one, you can adjust the length like this. You can adjust the length along the X and Y axes, and you can also adjust the height. So notice how when I type in a value right here, that's gonna allow us to adjust the height. And so there's also other attributes that you can add as well. Like for example, the material of the object. And so with the material, notice that right now there's nothing in here. So what you would have to do is you would have to type in a value for a material. So if we were to type in a value of blue and hit the enter key, notice how that object is now going to be blue. So you can type in your typical colors like orange or yellow, other things like that to apply a material to an object. So notice how you can also add materials using a hex code like this. And so, so far, like this is kind of interesting, right? You can come in here and you can type in values. Well, great, you can push pull a box, all of that. So you don't necessarily, like so far, this hasn't been ultra, ultra interesting. But what makes this interesting is notice how on the right hand side of this object, there's a button for details for each one of these values. So if I click in here, notice how this gives us the option to set this so that users can either see an attribute, edit an attribute by typing, or select from a list. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to create a box like this that had options for different colors. Well, what you can do is you can click on this. Notice how this is going to give us a display label. So we could make this say something like pick a color right here then you can add options for different things they could click. So for example, let's say that we wanted to give options for different colors. You could type in options for red, blue, orange, and let's go with green right here. And we can click on the button for apply. What that's gonna do is that's going to set up our object where now if our user right clicks on it and goes into dynamic components and clicks on component options, now there's an option in here where they can select different colors and click on the apply button. So basically what we've done is we've created a smart object where a user can come in and they can adjust the way that it's going to look by selecting an option from a dropdown. And so you can also do this for other values as well. So for example, let's say that we want our length to be something that our user can adjust. Well, we could just set this where the display rule says that they can edit this as a text box, like this. So what that's gonna allow us to do is that's going to basically allow us to have our user type in a value for our length. So we could call this length on X axis. And we could say type a value and click on the apply button. Well now, if we were to look at the component options right here, notice how we can adjust this. So we could type in a value of like 30 and hit the enter key or click on apply and our user could adjust this to a different length like this. So you could either have them type in a value or, um, and this is sometimes helpful, um, sometimes you just want to allow them to select from a list that's how that cabinet was that we worked with before because you're going to use this value in order to adjust our object. So let's say you wanted to give them options for 24 inches wide, 36 inches wide, and 48 inches wide. You could click on apply right here. Well now our Y value, you're only going to be able to select these options right here. And so what that does is that gives you really interesting options for different things that you can have your users pick. And so something's messed up with this Y value. Okay, so my 48 inches didn't go in here. So that is one thing you do have to kind of pay attention to detail in here because it's really easy to break these. Um, so you just need to pay attention to what you're doing. Now, if I type in a value of 48, it's gonna work fine. But what that's done is that's allowed us to really quickly create this dynamic object inside of SketchUp. All right, and so there's a lot of things that you can do with this. I don't wanna go too far down this path right now, but what I do wanna know is you can also nest objects inside of each other. So let's say, for example, that we were to create some shelves. So I'm gonna do a shelf right here, and we're just gonna make it a component. We'll call it bottom shelf. I'm gonna make a copy of it. Here, I'm gonna make this unique, and I'm gonna call this middle 
shelf. And you wouldn't necessarily do this if you're making a cabinet, but um, we'll, we'll let it work for right now. So then we'll take this one, we'll make this unique, and we'll call this the top shelf, like this. But then, let's say we were to select all of these and put them into a single component and just call it shelf, right? We'll notice how inside of this object, these items show up in your list of objects. So your nested components in here can take on attributes of other objects. And so what we could do is notice how in here, if I click this drop down right here, instead of selecting the size like we did before, we could select a custom name. So I'm just gonna drag this down, click on enter a custom name right here. And we're just gonna call this um, width. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this so that our users can type in either a value or select from a list. So let's go ahead and set it so they can type this as a value like this. So our display label is gonna be width. We're gonna display this in inches. We're gonna click on apply. So what that does is that allows us to set this where people can type in a value, right? So we've got a value in here, but nothing's being passed on to these other objects. All right, and so what we can do is let's say that we wanted this shelf right here to link to this value that people set when they go into their component options. So what we could do is we could add an attribute right here and we could set the length on, let's call it the X axis. And we could just set this to, instead of having a value that's typed in, you could just do an equals. And then you can click on the button for width right here. So notice what that does is that goes and it finds the variable that we created and it links this together. So now, whatever value I type in there, that bottom shelf is going to adjust to that width. So what that does is that gives you a ton of different options of different things you can do in here with different values. And so where this starts getting really interesting is you can also do math in here. So let's say for example, that we wanted to link all of these back to this width function, right? So we'll just come in here and do an equals width, but within these cells, you can also set this where this does math. So let's say I wanted this bottom shelf to be half of the top shelf. We just type in a value of 0.5. So we're gonna, or we could type in a value of times and then 0.5. For our middle shelf, whoops. For our middle shelf, we could do a times and then a 0.75 like this. And so now if we make this adjustment, from our component options. So if we type in a value of like 36 inches, notice how these are going to adjust dynamically in here based on the values that we enter. There's a lot of different functions in here that you can use in order to do different kinds of math and other things like that. Um, we're not gonna get too far into that in this video, but you can already start seeing the possibilities here. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we'll do something a little bit more practical, but I'm excited to get started with dynamic components. Um, if you wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure to check out the SketchUp Essentials course. Um, I will link to that in the notes down below. I'd love to see you in the course to help you learn SketchUp step-by-step. Step. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.